Ah, good old DOS. You served as my primary source of games for my childhood, and you still hold a place in my heart. That's not to say I didn't play any other system like the NES and SNES, but I spent more time on the PC. For those who don't know what DOS is, here's a quick lesson. DOS, or Disk Operating System, is an operating system that uses disks, hence the name. The disk refers to a floppy disk, hard disk, or optical disk. The system was called MS-DOS and a rebranded program called IBM PC-DOS, both of which were introduced in 1981. As time went on, other companies introduced their own DOS system, including the R-DOS in 1988, ROM-DOS in 1989, PTS-DOS in Russia in 1993, and FreeDOS in 1998. It shouldn't come as a surprise that DOS ruled the market from 1981 to 1995. This was when Windows 95 stepped into the spotlight and took over. As time went on, DOS started to look more and more irrelevant, although DOS games were still being made. And wanna know something else? There were other operating systems, including Apple DOS from 1978 to 1980, Pro DOS from 1983 to 1993, Atari DOS from 1979 to 1987, Commodore DOS, TRS DOS from 1970 to 1981, and Amiga DOS. So what does this have to do with DOSBox? The answer is simple. Without MS-DOS, DOSBox may not exist. This video isn't about the complete history of DOS. That would take too much time. With that out of the way, let's get to DOSBox. This series will be in three parts, and this video will only cover DOSBox 0.74-2. DOSBox is free software written in C++ and distributed in GNU General Public License. Since its release in 2002, there were over 34 million downloads. I guess there are those who enjoy DOS games. Like myself. One thing I can say about DOSBox is how customizable it really is. When I say customizable, I mean it. You can change literally everything from resolution to output to cycles. It's so customizable, it's crazy. However, you should be careful when doing so. If you get too careless with the customization, your experience is going to suck. Some of the features included are virtual hard drives, peer-to-peer -peer networking, screen capture, and screen casting. Screen casting is fancy talk for recording screen output. Despite the features, there are some issues I had with it. For starters, when you do a screen capture, it's in PNG format. I'll go over PNG and image formats in another video. Video can only be recorded in AVI format. Just like image formats, I'll explain video formats in another video. Another thing I don't like is there is no 64-bit version. While minor, I would like to see a 64-bit DOSBox 0.74-2. What really sucks is that not all programs work with DOSBox for whatever reason. It seems rather odd for a program to work fine on an old school computer, but decide to do jack squat on an emulator. Go figure. One cool thing I like is that how digital retailers like Steam and GOG include DOSBox for DOS games. One thing I should mention is you don't know which version of DOSBox you're going to get. I say this because Monster Bash from Steam uses SVN, while Heretic on Steam uses DOSBox 0.71. I should also mention you can pull the folder from Steam and place the whole thing into whatever folder you're using. And probably run the game better. While also a minor complaint, you can't set up CD drives or floppy drives automatically. Okay, let me ask an honest question. Why would you ever want to set up a CD drive or floppy drive for DOSBox? It is true that later DOS games came on CDs, and certain games need it for video, data that has to remain on the CD, or whatever. Nowadays, retailers like Steam and GOG release the CD versions of certain games, so it makes the CD drive rather pointless. One last thing I'd like to point out is the internal speaker isn't accurate. I do distinctly remember the internal speaker very well, and the audio for that program is too high-pitched, and no, you can't change it. Overall, this DOS box is worth looking into, but how does it stack up to SVN? Stick around for part two.